Okay, here we're looking at uh, the actual tripod that everything is going to be mounted to. This is our standard 3 meter tripod. This is the, uh, the tripod legs, both sets short and long. And we'll see how that's uh, assembled together momentarily. Here we have our upper mast with a lot of pieces assembled onto it that I'll get into in a moment. Our lower mast. Um, here we have our cross arm our three stakes that we'll be actually using on the tripod itself. We'll use another set of stakes for the uh, guy wires that are on the upper mast. And here we have our ground rod and cable that we'll use to uh, ground the whole device to the earth. Okay, when you get this and you unpack it, you get a lot of little pieces. And I feel strongly that the more you can consolidate your parts in the lab prior to going out to your deployment site, um, the less likely you are to lose something and the simpler it will be for assembly out in the field. Uh, you'll be more familiar with the parts that you have to deal with and less likely to leave something behind if it's stuck together. Another note, when you are unpacking this stuff, try to save some of your packaging so that you can have something to put this stuff back into when you're going to be transporting it out into the field. Okay, I'm going to start with the upper mast assembly here, which I've probably done the most of the work to. Here we have the guy wire clamp that goes just below the top of the upper mast. You can see that I've left room to bolt my cross arm onto. Okay, the uh, guy wires come in a 50 foot roll. I've cut them into three equal lengths, installed the clamps onto the wire and installed the wire onto the uh, guy wire clamp that goes at the top of the mast. I've actually installed the uh, clamps onto the turn buckles as well and the S hooks onto the far end of the turn buckle. I've gone so far as to actually crimp the uh, end of the S-hook that goes onto the turnbuckle shut so that it can't fall off and get lost in transport. And I've tie wrapped my guy wires into coils so they're just easier to deal with. I don't want to end up with a rat's nest of cables all twisted up and tied. Um, a thing that I like to do uh, for this type of installation is to have a couple of bags of various size tie wraps on hand. We supply tie wraps with the station or, and the logger itself to secure your sensor cables to the weather station, but it's really uh, uh, beneficial to have some extras so that you can do things like this to make your life a little bit easier down the road. So now that this is all put together and all these parts are consolidated and simplified and I'm more familiar with them, I'm going to put this away into the packing box that it came with. Uh, this is the lower mast. There's not a whole lot to this. Simply a 1 and 5 eighths U-bolt that uh, I've stuck onto there just so once again that I don't lose it. This is what's actually going to secure the upper mast to the lower mast. There's a groove in the, lower, in the upper mast that actually indexes on this uh, indent on the lower mast and once those have been inserted into one another and properly oriented then we'll actually clamp this, we'll move this up a little bit, clamp it tight out in the field and that will hold the two together. I've got a box here which may seem like a simple thing but all of my tools, my tie wraps, any extra hardware that I have, my instructions, I'm throwing them all in the box. They're all in one place. I know where they are. When it's time to go out in the field, I've got it all in one place. I grab it. I go. I don't leave anything behind. I think it makes life easier. This is the actual tripod itself. Okay, you can see I've already installed these metal plates with the four bolts onto the feet of the actual tripods. These things rotate to a certain degree so that you can deal with uneven ground. Um, once again, the four bolts, hold the foot in place, it's been secured 
of one of my few tools. I've got a few tools here. I've got a Phillips head screwdriver. I've got two combination wrenches, a 7 16 and a half inch, and a, fa a fairly large pair of channel lock pliers. These are the U-bolts that I'm going to be using to assemble this uh, short leg portion of the tripod onto the legs of the long legged portion to once again consolidate my pieces. Over here you see your cross member. This comes in packaging of its own with all of this hardware loose. Okay, once again, I've familiarized myself with the pieces. I've installed all of the hardware onto the cross arm where it belongs. Uh, that makes it harder to lose. It makes me, it forces me to do an inventory because I know I have all the pieces for this end. I know I have all the pieces for this end. This is the portion that it actually secures onto the uh, upper mast. Um, those pieces are there. You can see that this is labeled top. That's helpful for later on down the road. Here we have three of our stakes. Okay, these will be driven into the ground with a sledgehammer through this hole on the base of the tripod, like that. That's going to work out very well for the sandy soil conditions that we have out behind our facility here. It may not work out so well uh, in other locations that are perhaps rocky. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different kind of ground conditions you can run into. Uh, something that you can do if you have to is you can actually pour concrete uh, pads with bolts in them to accommodate these plates that have four holes in them for that. You know, you use half inch uh, threaded rod or anchor bolts for that. Um, and down here again we have our ground system. We have a ground rod. This is the clamp that's actually going to be used to hold to secure this cable onto here if you wanted to. You could uh, assemble this portion together so once again you have less pieces to lose uh, in shipment to the field. Um, this is the U-bolt that will actually get used to secure this cable to the bottom of the mast on the tripod. Uh, 